Welcome back. Uh, time to move straight to our next major conversation. Of course, uh, uh, the news is no longer fresh that terrorists release a threat to kidnap the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari, uh, in a video uh, we saw going on social media as well. And not just the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, Muhammad Buhari, also they threatened to kidnap the governor of the northern state of Kaduna, uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai. Um, and barely 24 hours after the terrorists who hijacked the Kaduna bound train released uh, uh, that video threatening to kidnap the president of Nigeria and the Kaduna state governor. We're told insecurity fears have been heightened at the nation's capital, the federal capital territory, and this has led to the immediate closure of all Unity schools in Abuja. I'm sure that uh, if you check, you'd see that even private schools may also follow suit as well. Now, this was after three soldiers sustained injuries in an ambush, what is described as an ambush, by Boko Haram terrorists in the Bwari Area Council of the Federal Capital Territory. The soldiers from the Elite Brigade's Guard, or Guard's Brigade rather, uh, guarding the FCT as well as the presidential seat of government, were ambushed, uh, were ambushed along Bwari Kubwa Road uh, while on patrol of Bwari area where the Nigeria Law School and the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board Jab are uh, Located. Now, the Guards Brigade, we're told, is in charge of the uh, security of the president, uh, his entire family, the vice president, VIPs in Abuja, uh, that is in, not just in Abuja, the entire federal capital territory and its surrounding states. Now, this uh, will be the first direct encounter between terrorists and the brigades of guards in Abuja. Now, the soldiers are from the 7 Guards Battalion who have been carrying out patrol in the town following the intelligence reports of uh, an impending attack on the Nigerian law school came under heavy fire around the Kubwa Bwari Road. Heavy fire. And this led uh, to the injuries sustained by the soldiers. Uh, the injured soldiers have been moved to the Seven Gats Medical Center, we're told, uh, where they're currently receiving treatment. We hear they are in, uh, in stable condition. The signal has been out already. Uh, the spokesman of the Guards Brigade, Captain Geoffrey or Godfrey Anebi Abakpa, uh, did confirm this attack but declined further comments. Declined further comments. There's a whole lot of uh, activities going down there as far as security uh, in Abuja is concerned. Um, of course, yesterday the Federal Ministry of Education took a cue from the intelligence reports and they were proactive to say, you know, immediately all federal unity colleges in Abuja and the FCT should be closed with immediate effect and of course uh, ordering immediate evacuation of all students all right now while some schools had directed you know students to vacate latest on Wednesday July 27 other schools dis disseminated messages to parents asking them to come pick up their children yesterday without fail uh, due to the rising fear and anxiety emanating from the reported threats it's uh, uh, I'm sure you can, you can imagine the panic and pandemonium of parents running to get their wards from the schools, not knowing what exactly uh, was, was happening. All right, and of course, on Sunday night, uh, there were unconfirmed reports on social media indicating that there was heavy shooting around the federal government college, Kuali, in Abuja, and parents had rushed to the school to ascertain the safety of their children and possibly return home with them until calm uh, uh, is restored. This is what we have today in the nation's uh, capital, the federal capital territory, Abuja. It's um, a worrying situation and time for us to analyze this. I'm glad to say uh, we have joining us this morning two very, very uh, qualified and enlightened uh, security personnel experts uh, on the program tonight. We have uh, Mr. Uh, uh, De Dennis Amakri, who is a former director of the Department of Security Services, uh, the DSS, and of course, uh, Dr. Uh, Yahuza Getzo, who also joins us tonight, this morning as a security analyst. Gentlemen, a very good morning to you and welcome to the program. Good morning once again. Good morning. All right. Uh, uh, Dr. Makri, let, let's start with you. Um, when you hear that uh, the Brigade of Guards a habit attack. And from this report, uh, the introduction, we're told that they are the ones directly involved uh, with, uh, with protecting the president. What comes to mind? 
for you as a, as a um, former head of the, the intelligence in the country? Uh, good morning. Uh, let me make some clarifications there. First of all, I'm not a doctor. I'm just Mr. Amakri. Apologies. Uh -huh. And then, of course, um, secondly, the Brigade of Guards are there for the protection of the federal capital territory. They are not directly involved in the protection of the president. Uh, the president has no protective details that are supplied by the Department of State Services. So those are two things uh, we should note. Now, of course, let's go back to Kujie prisons. Uh, you remember when uh, the attack happened? And then, of course, uh, we also talked about it, that um, the, the place that this happened is too near the proximity to the federal capital territory. In fact, it is part of the federal capital territory, you know. So, in fact, um, the Brigade of Guards must have gone ahead and then, of course, um, uh, do their job because uh, they were actually patrolling to make sure. Because we warned at that time that these guys have a final target, and that is that will be Abuja itself, the seat of power. So, of course, now we have uh, the Brigade of Guards um, repelling that, and uh, I'm very worried though because um, we keep on giving publicity to the terrorists. We, we keep on giving publicity to them. Uh, they've attacked the Brigade of Guards, three were wounded. How many of the uh, terrorists were wounded, we don't know, you know? So this is, this is an, a very fundamental issue. Uh, I'm, I'm saying this because the final objective of terrorists is publicity. And as they give this publicity, we, inadvertently, the Nigerian media, is giving the publicity to, you know, to them. All right. Um, I'll come to you, um, uh, Dr. Getso. What are your, your, your thoughts on the video, you know, released on Sunday? Yeah, threats to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Are these empty threats? Or you think that uh, these threats by the terrorists who are somewhere in the bushes around Kaduna State should be taken seriously? Well, um, in the uh, security and intelligence, there is not to be taken lightly. And um, it is inability of the government to manage information very well. In 2016, 2017, and 2018, I personally have provided information in respect to uh, presence of this uh, guy in the areas of uh, Sabahusi, which is part of the Niger State neighboring the Buari Area Council, in the areas at the back of uh, uh, Guagualada, and the, in the areas around uh, Robochi, neighboring, uh, which is part of Abaji area council, neighbor, neighboring um, Nasarawa Toto of Nasarawa State, among other places. <clears throat> and I have been alerting the government, a writing and in person and on media, for the fact that there is need to take a very quick response, not even to allow these guys to continue to reorganize themselves. But government was so adamant due to negligence and inability to manage information and utilize it, which was a free information, not even a paid information. However, I want to tell you that I didn't find the threat as something that government or any security person would consider as a light. I'm not surprised if these guys have the confidence and courage to have sent such a message to the government, looking at, at how they were able to conduct their operations successfully at the seat of the government, that is the Kujie jailbreak uh, uh, drama. Because I consider it as a Kanyewood uh, drama or thereby. Why? Because you have all the headquarters of all the security agencies available in Abuja or Zurich within the 40 to 30, 35 to 40 radius, uh, kilometer radius, that they could have been uh, uh, kind of challenged, but they conducted their activity unchallenged. So it will not surprise me if at all these guys are able to kidnap the president himself, 
going by the threat they mentioned, and even without the threat. Because, yes, of course, if you are provided with the right information at the right time, you're supposed to promptly act. So, but if you didn't promptly act, and these guys test their machineries, test their ability, because the attack on Kujie jailbreak is test testing their ability. You have the mighty of the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian uh, the MMD Azupe International Airport, which is less than nine or seven to nine kilometer between the Kujie uh, uh, prison and the, uh, within the proximity. And you have the Nigerian Civil Defense uh, headquarters also within the five kilometer. And you have the Nigerian Immigration. And you have the Niger Barak, the Kamu Barak, the Lungi Barak, and Abacha Barak. And you have the Nigerian War College, you have the DSS headquarters, you have the Brigade of Guard everywhere uh, guarding the Abuja. And I, 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 I really appreciate uh, what uh, Mr. Dennis had mentioned for the fact that uh, these guys, the president, have his own guards, but not standing. If at all we have all these machineries and these guys have the capability, have the ability, have the confidence, have the kind of uh, mobilization. And if you know where the location of Kujie uh, prison is, you wonder how these guys were able to conduct their operations successfully for three hours, celebrate it, and even conduct, have a preaching session, and for them to also walk out unchallenged. This is really a big slap to Nigeria, not only uh, in the face of Nigerians, but even in the face of Africa, and at large in the face of international community. All right. Uh, uh, and um, be ready as well. More embarrassment will come if at all the government didn't speak to its responsibility because this is something that can be managed. I keep saying that our security challenge can be managed within two or three months if at all we have a serious government. The major issue is you don't have a serious government. All right. Uh, th thank you, uh, Ahmed Yauzage. So, uh, Dennis Macri, you you've listened to him. He says it's a, a threat to be taken uh, seriously, uh, this threat by the, the terrorists to attack and uh, kidnap President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, uh, how possible uh, is an attack on the seat of power in the Nigerian nation by these terrorists and an attack on the person of the president? We're aware of uh, this uh, uh, shootout between uh, security operatives attached to the advanced team in the convoy of the president in Katsina some weeks ago before the Salah holidays, you know, that one has happened and it has gone. Um, that probably gave us a taste of what these guys can do. How possible is such an attack on the seat of power in Nigeria with all the apparatus of security in the country as um, has been, uh, ha have been highlighted by, by your, uh, our guest, uh, Dr. Getsu. You've looked at all the, the plethora of all the agencies he's called. That sounds like a lot. So how possible is such an attack in the context of today's Nigeria's security apparatus on the president and on the entire presidential uh, architecture? Very possible. Very, very possible. Uh, Dr. Gesso is very, very correct because uh, let, you have to realize something, that the president is one of the most protected persons in the country this most protected person in the country. And he has, that's why he has this uh, protective detail around him. When he's moving or even when he's sleeping, they have a protective detail around him because he's the most protected person. Now, where, where are you protecting this person like that? Because the likelihood of attack is possible. And I can tell you when you look at the uh, when you look at the history of uh, presidential assassinations all over the world, most assassinations had happened very close to the presidents. You know, very very close to the presidents. That's why they said all the protective details and all the guards around the area who are responsible for protection are supposed to heighten their security. Heightening their security in the sense that anything could happen. You know, we have uh, in India, um, uh, the, the president there, the lady president there was killed by one of our bodyguards. 
We have uh, uh, President Ronald Reagan was in a public function in the United States when somebody very, very close to him shot him. You know, so you find out that if you look at the history, it is not far-fetched. And of course, the capability of these guys, you know, I am very, very sure that security agencies are very, very much aware of this. Because um, they, they, they have, like uh, Dr. Gesso said, they have practiced it, they have tried it, they've tried it on the advanced, advanced uh, party convoy, they've tried it very close to home at the, at the Kujia prisons, so these things are just practices. Now it's left for the security details or the people in charge of um, uh, protection to go back to the table and then, of course, re-strategize. Because, of course, this enemy means business. Uh, uh, you've given some interesting examples. I think you're talking about Indira Gandhi, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we have you yes. about Ronald Reagan. Um, we can look at um, uh, Robert uh, Kennedy, um, you know, uh, so, sorry, j j yeah, yeah. you can look at Kennedy, the former president of America. Uh, you can look at, um, in Africa, we have uh, the likes of um, uh, Laurent Kabila, um, who, was, who was shot. But all, some of these people were shot at close range. It was um, a sort of a sniper style assassination. For those uh, like Indira Gandhi um, and Laurent Kabila, it was the presidential guard. For Laurent Kabila, it was a member of the presidential guard who shot him at close range. If we go to Japan to see what happened um, to the former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, uh, someone in the crowd shot him from a distance. Uh, we look at what happened to Kennedy. It was allegedly uh, a, a, a sniper, Lee Harvey Oswald, from a building uh, above while he was passing a motorcade. So these are sort of, um, uh, 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 you know, sniper style, you know, shootings, not, not kidnap. Uh, but, but what these guys are saying is they, they, they will kidnap the president and take, hold him hostage. Um, apart from maybe some insider collusion of sorts with a member of the presidential guard or some close protection official, you know, uh, uh, harming the president, will it be possible for these, these bandits, these terrorists who are in the Zambisa forest and probably in the hills surrounding Abuja and the Kaduna forest to drive to Asurok Villa, pick the president and take him into the forest and say, we're holding you hostage. Uh, Mr. Markey, just to follow up on what you said. Yeah, very well. I'm happy that you know a lot about the history of uh, assassinations. And um, of course, and don't, take, don't make any mistake and think that they will come right into Asso Rock to go and look for him. He leaves Asso Rock. He gets out of that place. He goes to places. He travels. You know, he goes to the airport. So you see, it is not just looking at his bedroom or his office, you know, or any other place, wherever he goes to visit. You know, so the protective details have a big job right now on heightened security to make sure that this particular threat, you know, is neutralized. Because they cannot just sit back and say, oh, it's not possible. I don't think they are thinking like that anyway. But um, just to assure the public that it's just not possible. All right. Uh, 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 Yahusa Getso, you, well, let's look at the, 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 yeah. the move by, by the federal government through the Ministry of Education, ordering schools in the FCT to, to close down. Uh, this emanating from a, an intelligence report, you know, uh, uh, which said that uh, there was an imminent attack on, on some schools in the FCT. What are your thoughts on this? Um, has Abuja itself become so porous? that uh, bandits or terrorists, whichever the case may be, can drive to any school they wish and just kidnap students anyhow. Is this a real and existing tr threat? Well, let me tell you one thing. I believe, and um, I'm sure Mr. Dennis will be able to witness, that in the last 37 years to date, the recruitment of personnel in all the services, I'm not saying Nigerian Army, Nigerian Air Force, I say all the civilities have been really a mess for so many reasons. One of which uh, corruption is, has, has been playing a great role in terms of people paying and buying 
uh, offer into the services. So for this, a lot of criminals and a lot of um, members of the terrorist groups have also utilized the same avenue to buy offers and get their, 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 their colleagues, their friends, their oriented people into the services. So you have an internal uh, uh, kind of um, uh, uh, circumstance whereby Nigerian security and intelligence have not been able to manage and conduct a background check on its personnel, especially those who are being employed into the services in the last 37 years. Of course, it may have started longer than that time, but I want to tell you that there are practical know-how by even an ordinary person in the bush that if you have money, you can easily pay and get yourself employed into any of the services. And if you don't have money, and you don't have anybody to connive with somebody internally within the system, you will not get yourself there. So looking at what happens by closing the federal government schools, uh, myself, around um, 6.30 a.m., the principal of one of the schools where my wife uh, is, called my attention for the need to quickly come and pick our children before 12 noon. Even though I have had the information of the attack on Sheda, actually the attack is close to Federal Government College Kuali, but not surrender. The target wasn't Federal Government College Kuali. It was a community called Sheda. They conducted their attack successfully, and they were able to make some kidnaps. And um, as far as I'm concerned, based on the intelligence I gathered, it wasn't really direct attack on the, on the community, but rather there is a kind of opposition group who are using the, that community as a cover-off. So they went there to chase them away so that they can take off their arms, and there are certain other information which I cannot to disclose on air uh, for supporting our intelligence and security uh, who are working hard to see that Nigeria is safe. So looking at so many things that hap is happening around around Sulaja, uh, uh, around uh, the areas of um, Kaduna Road, around areas, some location, few kilometers to Gwari, and a few kilometers at the back of the Kamu uh, uh, Barak and Niger Barak. And to some extent, some activities of unscrupulous elements that has been happening around the areas of Oruko, Gidamongoro, Karshi, uh, as well as other areas of uh, uh, Abaji, Rubochi, uh, Garumagaji, at the back of Gwagwalada, uh, among other areas uh, somewhere uh, around few kilometers, about 20 kilometers away on the way to Niger State, and also some areas around Kappa, which are also no neighboring outside. The areas like Karfi, uh, the areas like um, so many other locations, which I don't need to mention for certain reasons. But I know we are providing this intelligence and um, information for security to, to, to utilize. But I want to tell you, in the last 11 years, Abuja, Abuja, federal capital Abuja have not been safe. Simply because of negligence, simply because of the ability uh, of our government to sit up its uh, constitutional responsibility, and simply because of the, even the inability of the government parts machineries to utilize this information and uh, uh, kind of um, uh, manage situations and circumstances and make the necessary arrests and also uh, kind of executions as at when due. So there is nowhere in FCT that have been saved in the last 11 years, I want to tell you, and I have my reasons. And I have been interacting directly and indirectly with the security personnel at all levels, across both of all part of the FCT, including all those, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the, the, all the services. Because I have been in Abuja, for all this while, uh, settled with my family, and I know the information I'm generating, and I know the information I have been sharing, and I want to tell you that Federal Capital Territory uh, uh, Abuja 
have been tested by these criminals, by these cowards, by these uh, uh, so-called terrorists. Because as far as I'm concerned, they can be dealt with. Their locations and their hideout is still, I keep emphasizing and I keep repeating myself, is known by many of the intelligence personnel and by many of the services. Only that, probably they have, been, they have not even provided with, a, with an environment for them to do the needful. And I keep saying that the number, the total number of personnel that we have in the country, and especially even man in Abuja, is not up to 15% of what is required. So I will not be surprised if the schools were closed, even though some of the private boarding schools also closed before the announcement, uh, before the ministry also asked the federal government colleges to be, uh, to be closed. We have six uh, federal government colleges uh, around FCT. But what have the government been doing? Go to Roboti, which is the most remotest school among all the schools you have, which is around the Abagi, which is neighboring very close to Nasara Toto, where you have the, uh, uh, the, the, the terrorist camp less than seven kilometers. And this is known, I have made this known 34 years ago to intelligence. But yet these guys are rebuilding their mighty, are rebuilding their capacity around that area, and they have never been challenged by any security team. All right, all right. Uh, uh, and at the same time, the Sabonguse area and the other areas of part of Buari and part of uh, Karshi and part of Kuje, you know Kuje is neighboring a very dangerous uh, uh, environment where Ansaru and others are settled which is neighbor in Nasarawa state and um, Nasarawa Toto, which has been known and has been made mention since Al Makot was the governor. He has discussed it, he has made, made it public. But yet, nobody is being taken serious. So I, 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 we are undermining some of the information and we are undermining the capability and capacity of these unscrupulous element within the services. And at the same time, we are undermining the capability and capacity of these guys and by day, they are testing their machineries and they are testing their capabilities. And I will not be surprised if among the brigade guards, if among the presidential combo, if among the special envoys, special details that are manning or managing or protecting the president, the vice president and all other distinguished personalities, you have this unscrupulous elements that have been engaged in the services. All right, all right. I uh, have my uh, yeah, reasons. Yeah, Mr. Dr. Gensu. Practical Gensel. reasons that I want to speak on them on right. a public medium. We'll come to but that in, in a security, second. the highest level of security authority yeah. are listening and watching my discussion here. They know the message I'm talking, I'm talking and they, I'm sending them a reminder right. and a follow-up on so many discussions we have had. All right, uh, Dr. Dr. Gensu, so let, let, we'll come back to you, Jiffy. Uh, 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 Mr. Den Denison Macri, um, uh, he's talked about, you know, intelligence and the role intelligence uh, plays. We'll, we'll come to a follow-up question regarding what he says. But um, we're told that um, uh, the, 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 it was earlier reported that um, uh, uh, the in National Security and Civil Defense Corps, the NSCDC, um, had issued a security alert uh, that the insurgents are planning to attack schools, churches, and public infrastructure. And this was what the brigades... Guard or the guard of brigades, uh, the brigades of guard rather, or the uh, guards brigade deployed troops, you know, to the entry and exit points of Abuja in response to this uh, uh, security tip or security alert by the National uh, the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps (NSCDC), and it was in this deployment of uh, their personnel to the exit points and entry points of Abuja uh, that uh, they encountered these terrorists. They intensified their stop and search. Uh, can you tell us your thoughts on the role intelligence is playing in Nigeria today, and particularly in securing the seat of Nigeria's power, the FCT Abuja, with all that has happened uh, uh, so far? Uh, well, um, let me correct an impression again. Uh, maybe the one of uh, the intelligence report that was given by the NSCDC was later. Because I remember very well that the DSS had uh, released the report about some two months ago, uh, even before the attack of Kuji, you know, that um, some uh, facilities, critical uh, national infrastructures are going to be uh, attacked, you know, and uh, 
Of course, um, some people have been very much aware of this particular uh, uh, warning for a very long time. Uh -huh. That's why even when the Puja happened, everybody looked at it. But yes, the intelligence is being produced on a daily basis. On a daily basis. But the, the problem we have here is that sometimes intelligence are being produced and then given to the consumers who sometimes take it lackadaisically. I'm happy about one thing, though, of recent, because of what is happening, the results that uh, these reports have been uh, uh, thrown up, a lot of people are now taking intelligence reports seriously. But they, can, they should do more. They should do more because it is not uh, uh, just getting the intelligence report, but uh, uh, putting in place the appropriate response, the appropriate response. You know, uh, could you please go the uh, report? But what do they do? Uh, they were just uh, maybe put more bottles and all those. That is not what we're talking about. Uh, look at the total infrastructure. And then, of course, look at how you can repair. You cannot say, oh, um, Mepa, there is no fuel. So there's no uh, fuel in the generator, and then the satellites, satellites are not working. So, you, you know, the, 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 the prison towers are very black and dark. Remember what we earlier said. There are always insiders who are reporting to outsiders. You know, and you find out that, in fact, the Kujie itself is a very good one, whereby people were actually watching and seeing what the security agencies will do. And the correctional officers were very lackadaisical about the whole thing. So it happened. And there are phones. Phones that have been smuggled in the, you know, Kujie prison is one prison with so much phones in them. So much. Because there are some high profile uh, inmates over there. And then of course they, they, they you know they can pay somebody to, to use their phone. So it is important they do this. All right. Uh, uh, finally, I mean, this issue of phones you've talked about is one that uh, um, I'm sure that uh, Dr. Getso will agree with you that it's a normal thing in the prisons in, uh, in Nigeria. But what does it say, uh, um, Mr. Makri, that um, it, it's taken not the Kujia attacks, I don't know if the stop and search has been ongoing, but from the reports we have, that it's taken the, um, the intelligence generated by or the skill report, a uh, security led by the NSCDC, uh, for the Guards Brigade to be deployed at the exit and entry points. Um, if indeed they had not been there all the while, since from the time of the Kujia um, uh, a prison attack till now, and they're just being deployed. You can see the results of what happened. They were able to apprehend during their stop and search, you know, uh, operations. These guys, or rather, they encountered them and uh, engaged in a gun duel. Um, what does it say that for some time we've not had a permanent stop and search operation, but soldiers at the entry and exit points of Abuja, despite all that's happened? Uh, you know, like I told you. Um uh, the, the brigade of guards are not just sitting down there and then uh, watching television and uh, just recently, yeah, you know, mobilized people to move around. That's their job to take care of that federal capital territory that they do every day. So, you know, it's not a matter of uh, it is just happening. You know, it has been happening, but when these reports come to them, they move up a level you know, to a heightened level of security. That's how it works. Hmm. Shouldn't security at the FCT be at the highest level? Shouldn't it have been at the highest level following at least the Kujia attacks? You said intelligence was generated before then. Shouldn't it have been, a, have been at the highest level? Not waiting for this current uh, recent uh, intelligence alert or security alert before they move to the entry and exit points if the reports we have are anything to go by. Uh, of course, right now, uh, I cannot tell you because um, I am not in there, but uh, I know that uh, they are on a very heightened alert. They are on heightened alert, but um, 
either level one or level five or level six. It depends on where they are, you know. Uh -huh. So they know among themselves which level they are right now. You know, that's not for public discussion. All right. I just uh, would like to thank you. We have so many questions to ask. For instance, the level uh, of security, how um, guarded Abuja is. Some say that, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the soldiers and uh, security institutions that are there, rather, are um, mostly administrative. You don't have as many soldiers, armed soldiers in Abuja as you have in other states. So you have the brigades and artillery uh, divisions and all that. But we, we don't have too much time to go into that. But I'd like to thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Uh, Dennis Marcus is the former director of the Department of State Services, and Dr. Uh, Yahuza Ahmad Ghetto is a, a security analyst and expert. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And have a pleasant time. Thank you very much. When we return, we look at uh, a recent victory and a world record set by Nigeria at the World Athletics Championship. It's given so much joy to a nation in need of hope. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. <laughs>